The Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. The September issue of the Fishman Magazine is out on newsstands now. Matt Broderick has a great article for you guys at Fish to Surf, and Jim Hutchinson has a great read on the virtues of a trolling motor up here in the Northeast. These are just a few of the great articles in the September issue of the Fisherman Magazine. Last night, the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission had their open hearing in Bethpage to gather public input on draft addendum six, the Interstate Fisheries Management Plan for the Atlantic Striped Bass. In case you missed it, the Fisherman was there live streaming the event. And they will rebroadcast that on thefisherman.com if you'd like to view it. This weekend's weather is looking a bit dicey to say the least. Let's check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin for all the details. Thanks, Tim. Hey, anglers, meteorologist Rich Von Olin here, News 12 Long Island Weather Center. All right, so some interesting stuff here. We're dealing with, of course, uh, the effects of Dorian. And uh, I want to show you what the maps look like here. Again, uh, as we go into the weekend, uh, fortunately, the storm, it's close, but uh, we're going to get brushed by it on the northwest side, it looks like. This is GFS. Core of the storm is about uh, 200 miles southeast of the island. Uh, there will be some pretty good rain, but then the wind really cricks up, and there's going to be a lot of big waves here. I mean, I, I suspect gale warnings, storm warnings, right through Saturday morning, so just uh, don't bother with Saturday. Things should calm down, though, as we get into Saturday night. I mean, again, the ocean waves will still be out there, big swells, maybe like 5 to 8 feet by Saturday night. And then probably down to about uh, 3 to 5 with a swell as we go into Sunday, and not much wind. If you want to fish... I think you can do it on Sunday. Again, just watch the inlets. There'll still be a pretty good roll out there. And I think by Monday, should be in pretty good shape there going into the new week. But again, uh, Dorian, the real deal. But it is offshore. It's not a direct hit for us. And just be safe out there heading out for the weekend on the ocean waters. Meteorologist Rich Von Ullen, back to you, Tim. Be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before heading out. It's big fluke time. Check out John Clemente with not one but two doormats over 13 pounds. He caught aboard the Miss Montauk this week. For the latest from Montauk, let's check in with Senior Editor Fred Galafaro. Hey Tim, and yeah, we finally got some reports of Albies inshore. You know, they've been hanging offshore. A lot of the offshore guys complaining they've been hitting their tuna lures. I had two different captains tell me they had Albies around the boat uh, off the point in Montauk. On the weekend, um, both Captain John Padawano and also Captain Savio Mizzi uh, both reported uh, Albies bouncing around, a couple of schools popping up near their boats. They weren't rigged for, uh, for Albies at the time, but they definitely identified them as Albies, so look for that fishing to take off any time now. Uh, also, Tons of bunker along the beach. Heard this from a number of sources, like from Southampton all the way out to Montauk. Uh, whales on them in close to shore. Uh, sharks, a lot of sharks on them, and also uh, porpoises. So uh, you know, pretty putting on a pretty good show. Uh, not much in the way of fish, although Montauk itself, the point in the north side, did have some good action with bluefish from anywhere from one to four, maybe five pounds tops and uh, also some school bass mixed with them over the course of the weekend. Uh, fluke fishing still real good out in 70, 75 feet of water off the south side, Cartwright grounds in particular. Uh, in terms of quality, you know, a lot of 5 to 12 pound fish. Actually on the Sea Wife uh, Friday there was a 13.8 pounder caught and there's been a number of other fish in that 12 pound range also uh, caught over the weekend. Uh, Southwest Ledge, uh, you know, good sea bass, uh, pretty decent bass fishing, but also hearing of quite a few cod uh, there at Southwest Ledge and also east of Block, um, east of the windmills. So uh, a decent early showing of codfish uh, on the east end. And uh, along with uh, those bluefish and bass, there's been some bonita bouncing around on the north side, particularly outside the mouth of the harbor. So a lot going on out there, the porgy fishing, you know, it's like a broken record. Uh, limit catches on most days if you're fishing, uh, fishing for the scup. But um, yeah, pretty good outlook, and looks like we're off to a good start for the fall fishing. It, let's wait and see what happens with uh, with Dory and passing by the end of the week. Uh, might knock a couple of days off the calendar as far as getting out. But uh, keep an eye on it. When it clears up, well, could be a whole different scene. Till next week, Fred Golafaro here for thefisherman.com. Now let's check in with Mike Dean from Shinnecock. 
Thanks, Tim. Kind of a quick one. Actually, running out to the um, the meeting tonight over in Bethpage. Um, hopefully, some construction stuff comes out of this uh, this meeting, and the regulations for next year are really going to work towards getting the fishery back uh, for striped bass to what it should be. Uh, things are definitely coming alive between Shinnecock and Mauritius. Uh, a lot more bass off of the beach, taking small sand eel imitators and, uh, of course, the favorite A27 with the green tube. Uh, this morning, first report of an alley in Shinnecock Inlet. Um, also out of Montauk, I heard there were a few, so it's game on now. Um, I've been having a lot of luck with uh, half-ounce white bucktails with like a fat cow jig strip and a teaser. Uh, they've been taking both. Uh, a little bit of topwater action on some of the calmer days. Be interesting to see what happens when the uh, swell from Dorian comes through. Uh, fluke fishing picked up a little bit outside of Shinnecock, but with the wind over the weekend, not too many people got out. Uh, there were a few fish in the inlet, but really think it's going to be all about uh, now, that, now that the crowds are gone, being able to drive on the beach and chase those bass up and down the beach and get those albies in the inlet and obviously uh, some nice run and gun. So be safe out there, have fun, catch them up, and uh, hopefully I'll have some uh, news from the meeting for you next week and some real stellar reports. Thanks. If you're looking for a quality fishing boat, one that's affordable, check out the Sea Pro powered by Suzuki. For less than $400 a month, gets you into all the action. Visit Kale's Family Boating Center for a test ride today. From the Great South Bay and Fire Island area, we have Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Tim, Fire Island report. Looks like uh, a lot of uh, false albacore, bonita, uh, Spanish mackerel, you name it, all of those beaches is tight on the beach, people catching them off the Fire Island community beaches, so that's something to look forward to, and they do come inside the inlet, so be ready with light tackle, a little cripple herring, and uh, catch them up, and it's a lot of fun. Crabbing is spectacular, blowfish action is off the hook good, and uh, looks like the sea robins have left. I'm waiting to see a, a bite of weak fish now. September, they usually move out, gang up around the inlet, and there's still some fluke to be had. The season's open till. Uh, the 30th of the month, 30th of September. So get out there. Lots of things are happening. Fishing should be great. As soon as this storm passes, looks like Sunday's going to be a great day. So catch them up, Fire Island. Let's check in again with Fred Galafaro with this week's surf report. Hi, Tim. Uh, yeah, finally hearing about some Albies. Uh, confirmed uh, reports of Albies inshore from the boats in Montauk. Um, none that I know of yet in the surf, but it's got to be any day now. The, fi the fish are around. They, some of them at least have moved inshore, so uh, they should be uh, well established, I would think, by this time next week. Um, there's been some good shots of blues, uh, anywhere from one to four pounds, and mixed with school bass uh, in Montauk on the north side and up front. There's a couple of um, good innings over the weekend. Uh, all the inlets, from Rockaway all the way to Shinnecock, uh, hearing mixed bags of small blues, some small bass, uh, bonito, and also uh, uh, some Spanish mackerel mixing in with them. And that's, like I said, pretty much every inlet has had it, some better than others. Uh, I would say particularly Shinnecock, but had some good reports from Rockaway down near Breezy Point also. Um, and Riches also had some good reports. Uh, as far as the open beach goes, uh, he's still hearing mostly sharks and rays. Um, that might change with Dorian coming up the coast. That's going to really stir things up the end of the week, again, depending how close or how far it passes offshore. But I expect we're going to get some kind of weather and some kind of built-up surf from that. So uh, it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Um, tons of bait, everyone I speak to, everywhere, uh, loads of bait from uh, Peanut Bunker, uh, the, the adult bunker I mentioned out along the uh, South Fork from Southampton to Montauk. Um, lots of bay anchovies or white bait, if you prefer. And uh, even hearing a lot of spearing um, in some areas. So uh, we're really set up as far as bait goes. Uh, let's see how things hold together. Uh, at once Dorian passes, and it could be a real turn on, um, or it could scatter the bait. Let's, let's see what happens with that. Um, in the meantime, don't forget about the surf slash inshore show that's coming up September 19th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Huntington Hilton. Uh, Going to be a great night, lots of great vendors, uh, big raffle. Uh, everyone, first 600 people get a nice goodie bag with a bunch of tackle. So make it a point, come on down, $20 at the door, uh, $15 for the kids. 
and uh, a lot of great seminars too. So come on down, we'll see you then. Fred Golafaro here for thefisherman.com. The West End Report is brought to you by Rachel's Waterside Grill on the Nautical Mile in Freeport. You hook it and they will cook it for just 12 bucks per entree. Call 516-546-0050 for all the details. Joey Leggio, what's going on? Uh, Deb Zinlet had out uh, Evan on Thursday, hit the bottom fish grounds. Bottom fishing is super strong. The fluke fishing is phenomenal. We anchored up on a piece, had a lot of uh, blowfish, sea bass, um, tons of porgies. And while we anchored, I was casting a small one ounce spro bucktail along the structure and just about every single cast hooking up with a fluke using a simple um, spro gulp combination. Pulled the anchor, started drifting that exact structure and it was one after another on the flukes. Great, great action. A lot of nice fat quality fish as well. Then on Friday, had out Sean and his gang. Basically the same thing, hit the structure, plenty of fish again. This time we hit the AB reef, drifting on the uh, wall on the north side. And again, lots and lots of fluke. Had some nice fluke up to, I believe, four and a half pounds on that day. On, what do we got? On September, let's see, the first day of September, took out Frankie right before he starts kindergarten. Hit the uh, triggerfish spots. Frankie had some nice triggerfish. Great to see those suckers come up here. Great fish to eat. And honestly, they're not that hard to fillet. I got a video up. You can check it out on how to fillet those fish. The meat's probably one of the best taste and best texture meats you're going to find in any of the fish that we get up here. Then the following day, oh, we took out Jim. We hit the bridge. It was pretty rough out there, so we stayed in shore. He had a boat full of kids and uh, basically played catch with the porgies, tried to get some stripers real fast. Current was ripping, but uh, we had bluefish, porgies, sea bass, not much on the stripers, but we did have a nice bonus catch of a Spanish mackerel. School came up behind a boat. Michael cast it, and boom, on a little silver spoon, he caught himself a nice Spanish mackerel. That's a bonus catch. So uh, that's basically it. The water's cooling down, as we all know. Fall's approaching. And a lot of life's starting to happen. The bay's a load of guys. Get out there, cast some little swimming plugs, little Yozoris, little swivel thing, silver uh, spoons, Spanish mackerel, green bonita. I'm sure the Albies are right behind. And everything's just coming together like it should for this time of the year. But that's basically it for Deb's Inlet. And I'll talk to you soon, Tim. Thank you so much. From River Bay Outfitters, we have Paul McCain. Hello, Tim. Here I am. I'm a local haunt close to my house. I try to get out as much as possible. It's tough owning a shop, but I did get out there today. It is early September, and let me tell you, it's just beautiful out here. What I found? Bait. Baits everywhere. Bunker, spearing, Achilles, everything. And using a fly rod, I was into some small bluefish, closer to snapper size, but on a fly rod, there's so much fun. This is going to, if this stays like this, we're going to have a terrific fall. Now, on the freshwater scene, Elwood Bill, Elwood Flies Bill, He's been taking his kayak and go fishing for its pond. And you know what? He's reporting that everything is really happening. Bluegills, bass, pickerel. Twice. He went twice the last week. Had a banner days both days. There is a lot of fishing on Long Island. Let's get out and do it now, guys. This is going to, it's going to be a long winter. But right now, I'm going to hit the smaller ponds, the smaller uh, areas close to my house. Salt water is calling me. So tight lines, everybody. And see you next week. Hey, it's News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin again. He's been doing a number with the Back Bay Spanish Max on poppers, and he also reported that the nearshore wrecks are plentiful with triggers. This is the time of the year for other visiting speedsters. If you've ever wanted to target false albacore, this fisherman video has all you need to know. Click on the card in the corner to view it, or look for the link in this video's description. Luke Feeney, what's going on in Sheepshead Bay? The fishing the last week has been really great. The start the fluking has remained solid in the AB reef area, both on the edges of the reef and in the middle of the sticky structure. The fluking around the Scotland area has been really great. I've been going up there right up close to the buoy and drifting all over that rocky bottom with bucktails and gulp, and there have been plenty of keepers with some nice fish to six plus pounds in the mix. There have been some fluke being caught again on the Rockway reef, both on the edges and in the heavy structure on the northern and so the southeastern parts of the reef, and bucktails with teasers and gulp have been working great in areas where you don't lose a lot of rigs such as the Scotland area and the deep water and the anchorage. But on the AB reef and the Rockway reefs where losing a few rigs is inevitable, the two hook chicken rig with gulp has been working phenomenally. The porgy bite has been red hot in areas like the Manhattan Beach Reef, the Elbow by Breezy Point, Louis Pier offshore, the Lighthouse in Breezy, and also in the Tin Can grounds and on the edge of the channel by Kennedy's in Breezy. As long as you read a steady stack of them on the bottom and drop that down on them, it's almost a guarantee to fill the coolers. They haven't really been finicky this last week, and they've been hitting worms, clams, and jigs. 
In addition to the porgies, a steady stream of blowfish have been coming up in the mix with them, and these make a great table fare. The weak fishing has been decent in Jamaica Bay by the, ju by the junction buoy in the North Channel, on live peanuts as well. The albies should be moving into the jetty area any day now, so start stocking up on your favorite albie lures so that you can be ready when they show up. I took a little hiatus from the saltwater last week on my annual family trip to Lake George, and I caught some monster smallmouth bass on live crawfish and on extremely light tackle, and what a blast it was. That's it for this week, and until next time, tight lines. Dave Yeagerman has a report from the North Shore. Thanks, Tim. Hey, Dave Yeagerman here from the Salty Fly Rodders. I'm fishing in Little Neck Bay. As you can see, the bridge is behind me. That's the Frog's Neck Bridge, and behind it is the Whitestone Bridge. I'm out here with my two friends on the kayak, Dan and Noah. We had a really good morning catching bluefish, nice size bluefish, I would say, four to eight pound blues uh, in the rips right outside of Stepping Stone Lighthouse. I'll tell you guys, this is a good fishery. You just got to look for the birds, listen to some intel, but the fish are around. Tight lines. Let's check in with Kenny Cannon and see what he's up to this week. Thanks, Tim. Down here at one of the Huntington ramps with the stack behind me there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, bass and bluefish all over the Northport Harbor, uh, all the way out to Northport Bay and also Huntington Harbor and Huntington Bay. The Ash Road, like, like pretty much all season, the Ash Road and beaches have been really hot. I haven't fished much this week because I've been away up in Pennsylvania at Lake Walden Pump Hack, and the fishing up there was pretty terrible. One small mouth and two large mouth, and that was pretty much it. All week, it was pretty horrible. But uh, yeah, down here it's been really well. It's been, been, been doing really well. So you still have a couple more weeks of fluke, uh, but the fluke bite, from what I hear, has been kind of slow. I haven't been doing that well, and the people that I've been speaking to haven't been doing that well. Although my grandfather did catch, uh, I think it was a 3-4 or 3-5 down in the bay, uh, on the south shore, so that's good news anyway. But up here, it's been kind of slow for me and the people that I know and I talk to. So bass and blues on the beaches, in the harbors, uh, pretty much all over the place. That's what I'm going to be focusing on this weekend. Hope you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Back to you, Tim. Kirk Fay has this week's offshore report. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everybody. I did two trips this last week. Both of them, due to the weather, uh, were definitely shorter than I had hoped. Um, the first one on Saturday, I ran to the Coimbra. We ran out in some rough conditions. We hung in there for uh, for most of the day. Uh, we found everything you would you would hope to find. Uh, we found the tuna chicks. We found the rays. But all we found on them were albies. And uh, once it got a little calmer, we pushed off a little bit deeper. And we found tons of dolphins, tons of whales. And we even marked plenty of sand eels. But again, just no tuna on them. The highlight of the trip was uh, Sean Coffey. Uh, kid's 12 years old. And he uh, landed a, a nice 14-pound mahi under um, some floating debris. So that was at least uh, something we brought home. And then on, on Tuesday, um, I ran out again, and this time it was really a mahi trip. And we uh, the big mahi for the trip was a 15-pounder who happened to be caught by uh, Justin Schneider, who's also 15 years old. So that was a good trip. And um, using Peanut Bunker, we also ended up catching a, um, a small bluefin tuna that we released, and along with the uh, a whole bunch of albies and that. We were south of Fire Island, about 25 miles out. Obviously, we all know of the storm that's brewing, that's coming. Uh, we'll have to see, but it looks like it lays down pretty quickly once it goes through. So hopefully, we'll be back on the water uh, before you know it. All right, until the next time, be safe. Have a good one. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dream Boat Contest. Until next week, this is Tim C. Smith for The Fisherman. Dot com. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.